Greetings and welcome back to Scriptures Unlocked. This presentation is entitled, Rahab the Harlot is not in Jesus' genealogy. So in the two previous presentations, I looked at the sin of Ham and the curse of Canaan. And in that presentation, I showed that Ham's sin was maternal incest and that Canaan was the offspring of Ham's incestuous act. The subsequent presentation looked at the fact that Ruth was an Israelite and not a Moabite by blood. This presentation will look at Rahab the harlot and I will show and prove that she is not in Jesus' genealogy. So this presentation will address the common misconception that Rahab the harlot is one of the women in Jesus' genealogy. Over the years, we have been taught and have believed that Rahab the Canaanite harlot was the mother of Boaz and hence is the same woman mentioned in the genealogy of the Messiah found in Matthew 1, verse 5. However, I will prove that Rahab the harlot and Rahab mentioned in Matthew 1, verse 5 are not the same person and are not even the same name when you look at the original Greek. The verse that is commonly used to support this erroneous view that Rahab the harlot is in Jesus' family tree is in Matthew 1, verse 5. And at this time, I'll share my screen to show you that particular text. Matthew 1 verse 5 says this. And Salmon begat Boaz of Rakab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, which we looked at in the previous presentation, and Obed begat Jesse. So persons have come to the conclusion that the Rakab mentioned here in Matthew 1 verse 5 is the same Rahab the harlot from the Old Testament. So the traditional view is that Rakab is the Greek form of Rahab in Hebrew, since the New Testament was written in Greek and the Old Testament in Hebrew. Another common argument is that Rahab the harlot married Salmon, one of the supposed Israelite spies, and Boaz was the offspring of that union. However, viewers, this is not true, and there's no biblical evidence that can be produced to support such a view, because the spies that were sent to Jericho were not even named. Therefore, to assume that Salmon was one of the spies because he's mentioned as the father of Boaz in Matthew 1 verse 5 is eisegesis, highly speculative, and poor hermeneutics. There is absolutely no sexual link that can be made from the scriptures between any of the spies and Rahab the harlot. None of these arguments are true as will be proven from the scriptures, but we have come to accept them without actually checking for ourselves to see if these things are so. I've done the checks and I'll be presenting the evidence from the scriptures to prove that Rahab the harlot is not in Jesus's genealogy. Let's review the story of the fall of Jericho and examine what the scriptures actually say about Rahab the harlot. Let's read about this in Joshua chapter two, Notice that there is no mention of the names of the two spies. Let's go to Joshua chapter 2 and look at what the scriptures actually say about the fall of Jericho and the events that transpired between Rahab and the two Israelite spies. Joshua 2 verse 1 says this. And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. And the woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of shutting up the gate, when it was dark, that the men went out. Whither the men went, I wot not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof of the house, and hid them with the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the, the way to Jordan unto the fords. And as soon as the, they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that Jehovah hath given you the land, and that your terror is falling upon us, 
and that all inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how Jehovah dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when he came out of Egypt and what he did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sion and Og, whom he utterly destroyed. And we looked at these two battles in the last presentation. Notice what Rehab continued to, to say. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For Jehovah, your God, he is God in heaven above and in, in earth beneath. Now, therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by Jehovah, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token, and that you will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. And the men answered her, our life for yours, if ye utter not this our business, and it shall be when Jehovah had given us the land that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. And notice the promise to Rahab. Then she let them down by a cord to the window, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. And she said unto them, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourselves there three days, until the pursuers be returned, and afterward may ye go your way. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath, which thou hast made us swear. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window, which thou didst let us down by, and thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street, his blood shall be upon his head, and we will be guiltless. And whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. And if thou utter this our business, then we will be quit of thine oath, which thou hast made us to swear. And she said, according unto your words, so be it. And she sent them away, and they departed. And she bound the scarlet line in the window. And they went and came unto the mountain, and abode there three days, until the pursuers were returned. And the pursuers sought them throughout all the way, but found them not. So the two men returned, and descended from the mountain, and passed over, and came to Joshua, the son of Nun, and told him all things that befell them. And they said unto Joshua, Surely Jehovah hath delivered into our hands a land, for even all inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. So viewers, that is the sum total of what transpired between the Israelite spies and Rahab the harlot. She showed them kindness. She made them swear that when they took the land because she had faith and she recognized that God was with this people and she said that Jehovah, he's the God of heaven and of earth and she made them swear and they made a bargain with her that when they took the land that they will spare her and her entire household. So that is the sum total of what transpired between Rahab the harlot and the two Israelite spies. So that is the story that is found in Joshua chapter 2. So Rahab is first mentioned in the scriptures in Joshua 2 verse 1. And she is clearly identified as a harlot or a prostitute. So Rahab, which is Strong's age 73-43, is, is a proper feminine noun. And notice... It appears five times in the King James Version, but notice what, I'm, what, what, what you are seeing here on screen. Notice what the outline of biblical usage is. A harlot of Jericho who aided the spies to escape. That's correct. Saved from the destruction of Jericho. That's correct. But notice this. Married Salmon, an ancestor of David and of Christ. Where in the scriptures can that be proven? That Rahab married Salmon. This is the common view that is out there that Rahab married Salmon, the supposed spy, one of the supposed spy that was sent by Joshua into Jericho, and that she, is, she became an ancestor of David and of Christ. So the view, the common view, which I mentioned at the start, is that Rahab the harlot, quote unquote, married Salmon, one of the supposed spies that went into Jericho. Nowhere in the scriptures can that be proven. 
this is a false notion. It is a false idea that Rahab the harlot was a part of Jesus' genealogy. So Rahab was a Canaanite, which means she was of a cursed lineage since Canaan was the offspring of incest and God had forbidden the Israelites from marrying anyone from the tainted lineage of Canaan. This is precisely why I mentioned at the start about Hamsin and the curse of Canaan because, because of what Ham did, Canaan was the offspring of that incestuous act and Canaan was cursed by Noah. And God had forbidden the Israelites from ever commingling with any descendant of Canaan. So the fact that Rahab was a Canaanite meant that she was forbidden for any Israelite to have any sexual union with, much less to marry her. So that is why I brought up that point initially. Notice what God commanded Moses to say to the children of Israel prior to them entering into the land of Canaan. And this is found in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1. Notice what God said. When Jehovah thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Ittites, and the Girgashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations, seven nations, greater and mightier than thou. And when Jehovah thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. That was the instruction, that was the commandment that God gave to the children of Israel prior to them going into the land of Canaan. And Jericho, where Rahab dwelt, was the first city after they crossed the Jordan that they encountered. Jericho was a bulwark that stood between the children of Israel after they crossed the Jordan. Therefore, viewers, the children of Israel were not to co-mingle with the people of Canaan because they were descendants of Canaan's tainted lineage. That must be clear. Let's read about the conquest of Jericho in Joshua chapter 6, where the children of Israel come past the city for a total of 13 times. They went around the city once for six days, and on the seventh day, they went around the city seven times before they shouted to bring the walls tumbling down. Notice what we are told in Joshua 6 verse 17. God said, and the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein, to Jehovah. Only Rahab the harlot shall live she and all that are with her in the house because she hid the messengers that we sent. So notice only Rahab the harlot and her house were allowed to live because she hid the two spies. Joshua honored the deal that was struck between Rahab and the two spies. And when the city of Jericho was taken, he gave instructions to secure Rahab and her household. Notice what we are told in Joshua 6 verses 20 onwards. So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straightway, every man straight before him and they took the city and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old and ox and sheep and ass with the edge of the sword. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she hath as he swear unto her. So promise made, promise kept. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and their brethren and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein, only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and of iron they put into the treasury of the house of Jehovah. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive and her father's household and all that she had. And she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. So that is all we are told about Rahab the harlot. In Joshua chapter two, Joshua sent two spies, 
she showed them kindness when the king of Jericho wanted their heads. She hid them and she saved their lives. They struck a deal with her that when they took the city of Jericho, that they will spare her and their entire family. When they eventually took the city, they kept their bargain with her and they saved her and their entire family alive. So that is all we are told about Rahab the harlot in the Old Testament. There is no other place in the scripture in the Old Testament where Rahab the harlot is mentioned. So let us continue viewers. So this is all that the scriptures say about Rahab the harlot and the fall of Jericho. There is absolutely no mention anywhere else in the Old Testament about Rahab the harlot and there is certainly no mention of her marrying anyone from Israel by the name of Salmon. In fact, even though Rahab the harlot and her family were spared, Joshua 6 verse 23 tells us this and makes it absolutely clear that the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and their mother and their brethren and all she had. And they brought out all her kindred and notice this and left them without the camp of Israel. Without simply means outside. So they were left outside the camp of Israel. Rahab the harlot viewers and their family were allowed to live in the land of Canaan, but were not allowed to enter the camp of Israel. The question is, why was Rahab the harlot left outside the camp of Israel? The answer is simple. Prostitution is an unclean thing and a detestable act. And God warned the children of Israel against such practices. Notice what we are told in Leviticus 19 verse 29. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. So prostitution is characterized as whoredom and practicing prostitution will make the land full of wickedness. Notice Deuteronomy 23, verse 17 and 18. Notice what God said. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. And a sodomite is a male prostitute. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Verse 18 says, Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of Jehovah, thy God, for any vow, for even both these are abomination unto Jehovah thy God. So the money that is paid as a result of whoredom should not be brought into the house of God. God said the act of prostitution and such proceeds are an abomination unto Jehovah thy God. So notice as well, viewers, that the penalty for anyone caught practicing the abominable act of harlotry was death. Notice what we are told about the daughter of any priest in Leviticus 21 verse 9. And the daughter of any priest, if she profane herself by playing the whore, she, prof she profaneth her father, she shall be burned with fire. So that was the penalty for harlotry. If the daughter of priests committed fornication, which the Bible calls whoredom, then the penalty was that she was to be burnt with fire. Let's read what Moses wrote about fornication, which the scriptures called whoredom in Deuteronomy 22, verses 13 to 21. Deuteronomy 22, verses 13 to 21. Deuteronomy 22, verses 13 to 21. Notice what we are told. If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her and give occasions of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman and when I came to her, I found her not a, not a maid. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife and he hated her. And lo, he had given occasions of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid, and yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity, and they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. And the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him, and they shall immerse him, fine him in an hundred shekels of silver, and give them unto the father of the damsel, 
because he had brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel, and she shall be his wife. He may not put her away all his days. So virginity was of high importance in Israel, as it should be today. But notice what we are told. But if this thing be true, and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die, because she had wrought folly in Israel to play what? To play the whore in her father's house. So shall thou put evil away from among you. So there you can see viewers, to commit fornication in the land of Israel, to have sex outside of marriage was considered whoredom. And the penalty for that was stoning by death. And if you were the daughter of a priest, you were to be burnt with fire. So viewers, prostitution was an unclean and a detestable act. And God did not want his people to practice any such things that were being done in the land of Canaan. And that is why Rahab the harlot was left outside the camp of Israel. So viewers, additionally, Deuteronomy 23 explains why persons had to stay outside or be left outside the camp of Israel in those days. Notice what we are told in Deuteronomy 23, verses 10 onwards. If there be among you any man that is not clean by reason of uncleanness that chanted him by night, then shall he go abroad out of the camp. He shall not come in, he shall not come within the camp, but it shall be when evening cometh on, he shall wash himself with water. And when the sun is down, he shall come into the camp again. Thou shalt have a place also without the camp. Notice, thou shalt also have a place without the camp, whither thou shalt go forth abroad. And this is talking about when people wanted to ease themselves, which is a natural bodily process. Notice what God said. Thou shalt have a place also without the camp, whither thou shalt go forth abroad. And thou shalt have a paddle upon thy weapon. And it shall be when thou shalt ease thyself abroad, thou shalt dig therewith and shall turn back and cover that which cometh from thee. For Jehovah thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee and to give up thine enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy, that he see no unclean thing in thee and turn away from thee. So the camp of Israel was supposed to be holy. Israel was to be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And God was in the midst of Israel because he gave instructions for them to make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Exodus 25 verse 8. So viewers, Rahab the harlot had two things going against her. One, she was a Canaanite of a cursed lineage. And two, she was a prostitute. Therefore, the children of Israel were to separate themselves from the peoples of the land and be holy. Notice what we are told in Leviticus 20 verse 23 onwards. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation which I cast out before you, like the Canaanites who were going into the land of Canaan. The Canaanites were driven out, for they committed all these things, and therefore I abhorred them. But I have said unto you, ye shall inherit their land, and I will give it unto you to possess it, a land that floweth with milk and honey. And I am Jehovah your God, which have separated you from other people. So Israel was separate and were to be separate from other nations. And God said, and ye shall be holy unto me, for I, Jehovah, am holy, and have severed you from other people, that ye should be mine. So viewers, God separated Israel from other nations, and they were supposed to be holy. The Hebrew word translated as holy in Leviticus 20 verse 26 is kadosh. And it simply means sacred, holy, or to set apart. It appears 116 times in the Hebrew scriptures. It is translated as holy 65 times, holy one 39 times, and saint 12 times. So kadosh means to be sacred, ceremonially or morally. And it is used of people or of angel or of the sanctuary. Therefore, viewers, God separated Israel from the other nations and expected them to be set apart and remain and remain holy. Before looking at the name of the woman in Jesus' genealogy, let's review all the verses where Rahab the harlot is found in the Old Testament. And these are all the verses. Joshua 2 verse 1 mentions an harlot's house, 
named Rahab. Joshua 2 verse 3 says, and the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab. Joshua 6 verse 17 says, only Rahab the harlot shall live. Joshua 6 22, Joshua said, go into the harlot's house. And the next verse tells us that the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and their father and their entire household. And the final place that appears in the Old Testament is in Joshua 6 verse 25, when Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive. So viewers, notice that these verses refer to Rahab as the harlot. And the reason that the scriptures constantly refer to Rahab as the harlot is so that the readers can easily identify who is being spoken about. This is done regularly and repeatedly in the scriptures, especially with names that are common. So for example, Simon was a very popular name. So the scriptures were used to differentiate them in the New Testament. And here are some the names of all the names of the individuals who were called Simon in the New Testament. Matthew 10 verse 4 speaks about Simon the Canaanite. Matthew 26 verse 6 speaks about Simon the leper. Luke 23 verse 26 speaks of Simon of Cyrene, the man who carried Jesus' cross up to Calvary. Luke 6 14 speaks of Simon, who Jesus surnamed Peter, because Simon was such a common name. Jesus distinguished him by calling him Simon Peter. Acts 1 verse 13 speaks about Simon the Zealot. Acts 8 verse 9 speaks about Simon the Sorcerer. And Acts 10 verse 32 speaks about, and in this verse, you have two Simons referred to in the verse. Simon Peter, the disciple of Jesus, and Simon the Tanner, who lived in Joppa. So viewers, it is clear that in the scriptures, the scriptures are used to differentiate individuals. So the same is also true of the name Mary in the New Testament, as can be seen below. There are many Marys in the New Testament. Matthew 27 verse 6 speaks of Mary Magdalene, out of whom Jesus cast seven devils. You had Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, who is the mother of Jesus, Mary, the mother of Jesus. John 11 verse 1 speaks about Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus. And notice as well, I put this verse, John 11 verse 2, because many persons have said that it was Mary Magdalene who anointed Jesus' feet. But notice what this verse says. John lets us know that it was Mary, which anointed, it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So the Mary who anointed Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair was Mary, the the sister of Lazarus and Martha, not Mary Magdalene. So many persons have said that it was Mary Magdalene. So it is Mary, the sister of Lazarus. So notice as well, John 19 verse 25 speaks about Mary, wife of Cleophas. This is another Mary in the scriptures. And Acts 12 verse 12 speaks of Mary, mother of John Mark. So in the New Testament, many women were called Mary. And the scriptures were used to differentiate which Mary was being referred to. Therefore, viewers, the scriptures repeatedly use these descriptors so we can know who is being referred to. Hence, the constant use of the harlot when speaking about Rahab. Because when we get to the New Testament, it is going to be easy to identify Rahab based on the descriptor that was used of her in the Old Testament. So, viewers, there are only two references in the New Testament of Rahab. And there is absolutely no doubt whatsoever that these verses refer to the same prostitute from the Old Testament because the events of Joshua 2 is referenced and she is still called Rahab the harlot, even in the New Testament. Here are the two verses, the only two verses in the entire New Testament which speaks about Rahab the harlot. Hebrews 11 verse 31, which says, by faith, the harlot Rahab, so we cannot mistake who is being spoken of. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. And James 2 verse 25, likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. So there it is. These are the only two verses in the entire New Testament which speaks about Rahab and it is calling her the harlot 
just as it did in the Old Testament. So Hebrews 11 verse 31 and James 2.25 both refer to Rahab as the harlot. And it's very clear that the verses also mention her receiving the spies or messengers. Again, viewers, these two Dege Dege verses are telling us that both writers are referring to the same Rahab the harlot from the Old Testament. Additionally, Hebrews 11.31 and James 2.25 are both in the New Testament, which was written in Greek, and she is still called Rahab, R-A-H-A-B, Rahab. Therefore, this debunks the argument which says that Rahab is the Greek form of the Hebrew name Rahab. Viewers, with this in mind, let's now re-examine Matthew 1 verse 5 and notice that there is absolutely no mention of a harlot in that verse and that the woman's name is Rahab and not Rahab. So here we are seeing the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah. And it can be found in Ruth 4, 18 to 22, which speaks about Boaz marrying Ruth and the child that was born was Obed. Obed became the father of Jesse. Jesse became the father of David and Jesus was called the son of David because Jesus descended from the line of David. So also found in 1 Chronicles 2, verse 1 to 15, as well as Luke 3, 23 to 38. So notice what Matthew 1, verse 5 says. And Salmon begat Boaz of Rakab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse. Viewers, the book of Matthew was specifically written to the Jews to prove that Jesus is the Messiah and that his lineage was Jewish, which is precisely why the genealogy was given in the first place. Rahab, as we know, in the New Testament was commended for a kind act shown to the two spies. So if Matthew was referring to the same woman who helped the spies, he could have said Rakab the harlot, but he did not. He said Rakab and left at that. We know this because Matthew did not shy away from referencing Tamar and Bathsheba in Christ's genealogy. Both of these women had a questionable past because Tamar, if you know the story well, was Judah's daughter-in-law who bore him twins in Genesis chapter 38. You can read the entire chapter to see what went down. While Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah, committed adultery with David in 2 Samuel 11. Notice what we are told in Matthew 1 verse 6. And Jesse begat David the king. And David the king begat Solomon of her, which is a reference to Bathsheba, that had been the wife of Urias. So Matthew was not sugarcoating or hiding anything. Matthew mentioned Tamar, he mentioned Rakab, he mentioned Ruth, and he mentioned Bathsheba. If Rakab was the same, Rahab the harlot, Matthew would have stated that. Let's take a look at the original Greek to prove that Rahab is not the same as Rakab, and neither is Rakab the Greek form of the name Rahab. So we are going to be looking at the original Greek text to prove that Rahab is not the same as Rakab of Matthew 1 verse 5. And I will show you as well that Rakab is not the Greek form of the name Rahab. The Old Testament, as most people will know, was written in Hebrew, while the New Testament was written in Greek. But we can compare both the Old Testament and the New Testament by looking at the Septuagint. And the Septuagint is the Greek translation of the Old Testament, the Greek translation of the Hebrew scriptures. Therefore, viewers, let's examine all the verses that we looked at previously, which mentions Rahab the harlot in the Old Testament by viewing the Septuagint. I've put the, the text here, but I'm going to show you. So it's Joshua 2 verse 1. Notice here, this is the name of Rahab. It is R-A-A-B. These are four Greek letters. Are three Greek letters. This is Rho, Alpha, Alpha, Beta. Let me now go to Joshua chapter 2 to show you the, the Septuagint. So let's look at Rahab. Do a search for Rahab. It will tell you it occurs 10 times, but some are, some are not referring to Rahab the harlot. 
Let me show you the other verses. So it speaks about Rahab. I will mention of Rahab and Babylon. Psalm 87 verse 4. Thou hast broken Rahab in pieces. And here Rahab is used of some sea creature. So let's look at Rahab the harlot. So this is Rahab the harlot. Let's go to tools. And this is the Hebrew text. So above you have the English. This is the Masoretic text, the Hebrew text, Hebrew script. And we want to look at the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of these Hebrew texts. So this is the Septuagint. So it has the, it has the Greek text and it has the Strong's number. So let me find the, the name, the Greek word for Rahab. It is Rahab, R-A-A-B. So I'm going down slowly just to prove and show you the Greek translation of the Hebrew name Rahab. So here it is, Rahab. It is Strong's G 4460, and it is Rho Alpha Alpha Beta. Let's look at the Greek text. This is the Greek script of the name, and it is pronounced this way. Strong's G 4460. Rahab, 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 and it is a proper feminine noun, so it's the name of a female, and it is of Hebrew origin. Rahab, two times, which are the two New Testament verses that it appears in, Hebrews 11 verse 31 and James 2 25. So what I've done here, viewers, is to show you all the verses in the Old Testament by looking at the Septuagint. This is the Septuagint. And every single instance in the Old Testament, this is how Rahab has been translated. This is the Greek form of her name. Rho, Alpha, Alpha, Beta, Rahab. It is in Joshua 2 verse 1. Joshua 2 verse 3. Same, Rahab. Joshua 6 verse 17. Rahab. Joshua 6, 23, Rahab. Joshua 6, 25, this is the Greek form of the Hebrew Rahab. Rho, Alpha, Alpha, Beta. So viewers, the Hebrew name Rahab is translated as Rahab. Strong's G, 4460 in the Greek. Therefore, when we look up the only two references to Rahab the harlot in the New Testament, then we ought not to see or observe any noticeable difference if Rahab is the same as Rahab. Again, viewers, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, while the Septuagint is the Greek version of the Old Testament. So we are able to compare Greek with Greek. Therefore, the Old Testament name Rahab in Greek is what you are seeing on the screen here. Four letters, Rho, Alpha, Alpha, Beta. So the Old Testament name Rahab in Greek must be identical to the Greek word used for her in the New Testament. Let's now examine both Hebrews 11 verse 31 and James 2 25 in the original Greek. And here I've taken a screenshot of it. Hebrews 11 31. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believe not when she had received the spies with peace. So here you will see the English on the left, the Strong's number in the middle, and the Greek word for the English on the right. So by faith, faith in Greek is pistis. By faith, the harlot, harlot in Greek is porne, from which we get the English word pornography. So it has to do with sex. Prostitution has to do with sexual encounters. So the harlot, harlot is translated as porne. And look at it. By faith, the harlot Rahab. Notice the, the Greek of her name. Rho, Alpha, Alpha, Beta. Strong's G, 4460, which I showed you earlier. Perish not. So Hebrews 11, 31, translate Rahab as Rho, Alpha, Alpha, Beta, Rahab. So, and that is the rest of the verse. 
So two observations can be made. One, Rahab is the same name that is used in Hebrews 1, verse 31. That is used of her in the Old Testament. So the name remains the same in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. So the English name remains the same. And when you look at the Septuagint in the Old Testament, the Greek form of Rahab is Rahab. And the second thing is that the Greek form of her name is the same as in the Septuagint. So Rahab is Rho Alpha Alpha Beta, Rahab. So that much is clear. The Septuagint, which is the Greek version of the Old Testament, uses the same name for her as is used in Hebrews 11, verse 31. And as you will see, that is being used in James 2, 25. So let's now look at the final reference to Rahab the harlot in the New Testament, James 2, 25. Notice what we read. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. Here is the, the Greek of her name. Let's find it. There it is, Rahab. Strong G 4460, Rahab, Rahab. Rahab is Strong's G4460, Rahab. So you can see I've highlighted it. I put it in a box so it stands out. So that's the name of Rahab in the Greek. So Hebrews 11 verse 31 and James 2.25 use the same Greek word for Rahab in both the Old and New Testaments. So Rahab in Greek is Rahab, Rho, Alpha, Alpha, Beta. That's the name that you can see on screen. That's the Greek form of Rahab. Let's now examine the Greek form of the name Rahab that is mentioned in Jesus' genealogy found in Matthew 1, verse 5. So viewers, if both names have the same Greek letters, then we can safely conclude that Rahab and Rahab are the same names. However, if that's not the case, then we have proven definitively or we can prove conclusively that the Rakab in Matthew 1 verse 5 is not, and I repeat, is not the Canaanite harlot from the Old Testament. Here's the Greek text of Matthew 1 verse 5. Matthew 1 verse 5 says, And Salmon begot Boaz of Rakab, and Boaz begot Obed of Ruth, and Obed begot Jesse. And here is the Greek text of Matthew 1 verse 5. And as you can see, there's a noticeable difference. Rakab mentioned in Matthew 1 verse 5, has five letters in her name, five Greek letters, Rho, Alpha, Chi, or Chi, Alpha, and Beta. So there's a difference. There's a clear difference between Rakab of Matthew 1 verse 5 and Rahab the harlot that we looked at in Hebrews 11, 31, and James 2, 25. Here is the Greek, here is the Greek text of Matthew 1, verse 5. And Salmon begot Boaz of Rakab. Notice the Greek letters in the box. Rho, Alpha, Chi, Alpha, Beta. Some says Chi, some says Chi. So that's the Greek letter. It's the 22nd letter of the Greek alphabet. Chi or key. So viewers, viewers, there's a noticeable difference between both names. Rahab is Rahab. Rho, Alpha, Alpha, Beta. Rahab or Rahab is Rho, Alpha, Chi, Alpha, Beta. There's a difference. So notice carefully that the Greek form, and here you're seeing both names together. Note carefully that the Greek form of Rakab in Matthew 1 verse 5 is what lo looks like a P, which is a Greek letter Rho. Alpha, what looks like an X, is the Greek letter Chi or Chi, Alpha and Beta. And when compared to the Rahab in Greek, it's Rho, Alpha, Alpha, Beta. So it's absolutely clear that both names are different. So this is clear proof that Rahab and Rakab are two different names, even though they are similar. So for instance, 
My name is Alric Williams. My name is spelled A-L-R-I-C, no K. My Alric is spelled A-L-R-I-C. I've met other persons who are called Alric Williams as well, but their name, their first name is spelled A-L-R-I-C-K. Even though the names are similar, they sound the same, but they are spelled differently. And there are two different names. If someone says, or someone writes Alric, A-L-R-I-C-K, Williams, that's not referring to me. That's not how my name is spelled. It is speaking about somebody different. And that is why descriptors are used. And that is why people have date of birth and you use other things to differentiate who you are talking about, especially if the names are common. So viewers, Rahab and Rakab are two completely different names and therefore two completely different individuals. So that much is clear. So the Rakab of Matthew 1 verse 5 is not Rahab the harlot from the Old Testament. So here I've, I've, I've done a little thing so you can see the difference. So in English, you have Rahab. The Strong's number is Strong's G 4460. The Greek form of Rahab is Rahab, and that's how it is pronounced. Rahab, or Rah Rahab, which is the correct pronunciation, is Strong's G 4477. It is Rho Alpha Chi or Chi Alpha Beta, and it is pronounced Rahab. There's a guttural sound. Rahab in the Greek is pronounced Rahab. Rahab is pronounced Rahab. So viewers, there are two separate names, two different names, which means there are two different individuals. The Greek letters are different, which means that Rahab and Rahab are two completely different women since we are comparing Greek with Greek. You are looking at two Greek names and you can see the difference. When I was in primary school, one of, the, one of the subjects that we did was called mental ability. We were told or asked to spot the difference. We were given a few objects and we were asked to spot the difference. I'm sure based on what I presented, you are able to spot the difference between, between Rahab, between these two names. There is a noticeable difference. One has what appears to be an X to us but it is the 22nd letter of the Greek alphabet called Chi or Chi. So there is a difference with these two names. They are not the same persons and they are not the same names. So viewers, what I've done is also to give you a chart of the Greek alphabet and its symbols. So the first letter of the Greek alphabet is Alpha, which appears in the name Rahab and Rakab. Beta is the second letter of the Greek alphabet and that is at the end of both names. And there you can see Rho, which looks like a P to us, but it is the, the Greek letter for R, Rho. And then you have the 22nd letter of the Greek alphabet, Chi. Some pronounce it as Chi, Chi. And it looks like an X to us. So viewers, both names are completely different. Therefore, this notion that the Rakab that's mentioned in Jesus' genealogy is Rahab the harlot from the Old Testament is simply not true. So I hope that this presentation was clear and we can put to rest the false notion that Rahab the harlot, the Canaanite woman from the Old Testament is in Jesus' genealogy. That is not true. The Rakab mentioned in Matthew 1 verse 5, she is not the same person as Rahab the harlot in the Old Testament. And there is no biblical proof that can be provided that says that Rahab the harlot married a man by the name of Salmon, an Israelite. There is none whatsoever. So we have heard a lot of things as we grew up and we have just accepted them without actually checking them for ourselves. So I did some research just to ensure that what we have been told, whether it is true or not. And I found that Rahab the harlot is not in Jesus' genealogy. Viewers, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and may God continue to bless us richly as we continue to study his words to prove all things. Have yourselves a wonderful day.